Okay. Um, hi. Sorry for the delay. Um, this is going to be a strange talk. Let's 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 put it out there. You know, we're all amongst friends, right? Um, so here's where you need to make a choice, because this is my introductory slide about me. There are two choices. Oh, one choice: should I do the high impact um, presentation of me, or should I do a low impact presentation of me? Sure. Like it's for it's on me. It's about me. High impact or low impact? Who's in favor of the low impact? Okay, one, two, three, four. Who's in favor of the high impact? That's clearly a majority. Okay, so don't blame I didn't warn you, right? Uh, so it's going to be the high impact. And um, it's an experiment. This is the second time I do, I'm doing this. Uh, so afterwards, I'll, after this slide, I'll ask you if I should do that again. I should get a mouse on screen somehow. Because I need to. Should it work on this end? Come on. Give me. Give me, give me, give me. Hmm. That's, that's. Oh, this. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, so high, okay, thanks. High impact, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, so who am I? Um, I'm father of five with a picture of five girls. Uh, one of them is single, uh, but you get me as a father-in-law, and I'm, I'm the one that wears a T-shirt, 10 rules for dating my daughter, <laughs> with the first one being get a job. Um, and my girls are like, no, not again. You know, I wear this somehow... It happens to be the first time that some guy comes around. Yeah? Uh, okay. Um, I'm also, I've, I've been a volunteer firefighter for 10 years, so uh, playing around with cars, rescuing dogs. Um, my helmet, this part is melted. Um, it was hot, but it was exercise and fun. Um, I do stuff with uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, scouting. Uh, this is a combination, of course, of firefighting and scouting. A um, large event in the Netherlands, 5,000 scouts every four years. I'm the author of, um, I'm currently writing book nine and book ten. So these are three of those. Um, and I'm also a caretaker. So this is one of the girls. And um, this also gives you an idea of uh, the balance in our lives. I'm also the Liberplan project leader. And this is the boring introduction. Uh, what do I do? I do remote systems management, you know, monitoring, backups, I do consultancy, teaching and training, Python, web, Linux, whatever, all fun stuff, and I write. Uh, this is my main project. Um, but I said I would ask you, so that first slide, should I do that again or shouldn't I do that again? Who's in favor that I should do that again? The high impact introduction of me in one slide. We think that, okay, okay, thanks. You know, it's, it's sort of, you know, you put yourself out there a uh, way, make yourself vulnerable. It's, it's a touchy subject, so thanks. Okay. Um, Liberplan is a web-based project management application. It's open source. Um, uh, it's very cool. Um, don't let the fact that it's been four years since the last release uh, scare you off, but I had other things to do, as you could see by the introductory slide. Uh, but... Um, uh, last week I was at the notary, so there's now an official Liberplan Enterprise company, and we're really going to uh, reboot it. Um, apologies first about my English. Are there people here from the UK? Okay, so I thanks. Uh, I'll try not to make really lame jokes about the current Brexit situation, uh, but it's I'm I'm pretty spontaneous, so I can't really <laughs> guarantee that I won't. But it's not. I'm not trying out to insult, it's just making bad jokes, you know, I'm not trying to insult people. Um, but the, the Dutch, they speak English, but they take everything literally. And uh, this is best uh, shown by, by this table I once found somewhere on Facebook. If a British guy says, with all due respect, he means, I think you're wrong. And I hear, 
he's listening to me, he's respecting me, we've got a nice dialogue going, right? <laughs> and there are several uh, things that I don't know by heart, so I'm probably mess up. Um, other people from other countries, I'll probably mess up too, but that's another culture, right? Um, okay, the reason for this talk, tell you how I did things, that's it. There's no hidden agenda, it's just telling you how I did this, uh, and what is this? Um, well, what is, uh, who knows about Odoo? Okay, so a lot of people don't, right? Who doesn't know about Odoo? See, that's a majority. Okay, so Odoo is Python-based. It's written by a Belgian company, mainly, but it's got an, uh, a big open source community. It's used all over the world, and it's sort of an e ERP kind of system, you know, enterprise resource planning, you can do your finances, you can you do your logistics, warehousing, uh, customer relation management, email campaigns, uh, billing, uh, quotations, all that kind of business processing stuff, it's all in there. They've got a community edition, which is of course free, and they've got an enterprise edition, which is of course not free. Um, uh, like Wikipedia says, an all-in-one business software including CRM, website, billing, accounting, manufacturing, warehousing management, project management, inventory. Web-based, we know Python, Postgres at the back, started in 2005, Community and Enterprise Edition. Uh, has also a community association, the OCA. So they are sort of doing their thing in open source, connecting to Odoo and has a large GitHub repo with many add-ons. What does it look like? Well, this is your main, could be, this could be a personalized main menu. Um, and this is where you install one of the standard 360 apps. That's on the standard system, so you can expand on that. And uh, this is just uh, a screen where you see your CRM, eh, your um, customer relation management, your sales, your opportunities. Um, that are currently playing, you know, as a potential customer, what's the chance that he will be interested? What do you think he will buy or not? What do you think he will spend on your company or not? Um, and uh, what's the project goal? My project goal? Uh, I have been asked to write a book about Odoo. Somebody asked me to write a book. And my answer was no. Because in the Netherlands, writing a book is a poor man's job. Um, if you write a bestseller, you have to think every copy sold is about one euro for the author. It doesn't matter what book. Any book in any bookstore, in anywhere in the world, is about one, one fifty. A thick book is maybe two euros for the author. So if you sell 80,000 copies, which is an, an, a bestseller in the Netherlands, and you do three books a year, you've got a very good salary. But if you're into IT, and I guess most of us poor slobs are, then maybe you sell 600 copies, which means you can go, go one time for a very fancy dinner, but that's it. <laughs> but this guy approached me and said, I want you to write a book about Odoo. And I said, no. Yeah, but I want you to write. You've write, written before, you're into open source, you can talk about it uh, pretty well, I guess. Um, <laughs> actually, I met him when I did a talk in the northern part of Spain. Two Dutch guys there and 300 people and we end up with each other, well, talking anyway, eh? don't get me wrong. Um, and um, so I said, well, I, I've been happily married for th 13 years and my wife's just f had just finished a contract management course for her work. She said, D invite him for dinner and let's talk about this. So we invited him for dinner, we talked about this. And it turned out that she said, well, this is basically a project. And the project is just an hourly rate. So he said, that's fine. We agreed on a, uh, uh, a modest fee. And uh, th so this is a project that I'm now standing here. I'm not getting paid. This is just me returning to share some knowledge after 20 years of gaining knowledge at FOSDEM. Um, and he wants this book targeted at, at fresh startups. So really low barrier to entry. If you want to start a business, start with Odoo. That's what he wants to, the message he wants to get across. And he has a vision for that. And 
it's a good vision, I think. So, yeah, sure, I'll write a book about it. Um, how do Odoo can help them grow their business? It has to be in British English. And uh, I talked earlier about my English, so, you know. But one of my daughters, after finishing high school, did uh, about a half a year add-on course she paid for all completely herself in London uh, because she loved the English language and wanted to learn more about it. So she really um, dove into the subject in London and I, I asked her if she could spell check my book. I gave her a red pen and I got a red pages, almost all, all a <laughs> stack of red pages back. Um, anyway, it's corrected now and the manuscript is, is um, correctly. Um, and I love to do talks. So I thought this may be some nice uh, subject. And to spread the word to other countries about what we're doing here um, is also a reason. Now, steps I took in this project. I wrote the book. The, it's very uh, simple. I developed a logo and um, I registered the domain. I talk about the book. Now, let's get into a bit of detail. You know, let's, let's take these steps one slide at a time. Writing a book, Git for version control. If you don't know Git, I'm not going to explain it to you. Um, the source is an ASCII doc, or basically ASCII doc tour dash PDF. That's my go-to tool for this book um, because it creates PDF. Um, I use a special build script, and that's all, always in any project. Your build script is what you make to combine your source files with ASCII doc or the ASCII doc dash PDF to get to a PDF. So that's, depend on the book, your, your build script will change. And publish it, publishing it uh, on lulu.com. Now this is not a, uh, a commercial message, but lulu.com is publishing on demand. So you upload a PDF of the content, you upload a PDF of the, the, the cover, and then anybody in the world, um, well you could, make the URL hidden, so only you can order the books, or you can uh, make the URL public, and then anybody can order the books. And as soon as somebody orders the books, that's when it's written at a print shop sort of nearish to your location. Um, and the funny thing is about this, there's no stock. Uh, so after, <coughs> normally, if you go to a publisher, they... they they have some 1,500 copies printed and they put it in their warehouse and when it's done, it's done. Sorry, books out of, um, out of stock. With uh, Lulu, it's never out of stock. And it's very easy to update. If somebody says, boy, there's an, uh, there's an error on page whatever, I correct the error, I run the build script, I upload PDF, so 15 minutes later, I have an up-to-date corrected book for sale in the shop. Um, okay, designing a logo. I'm, I don't know if I need to tell this, but I'm a geek. And geeks are worse in design, bad in design. I'm bad in design. I've, they are, they have, I've created a few websites. The message is correct, but it looks like crap, right? Um, so I think tech nerds don't do design, they shouldn't. Um, but then there's Fiverr with two R's. And Fiverr is um, a sort of a, a, a web shop with designers from all over the world. And those are designers. That's their thing, that's in their DNA. Where tech and, and nerdy, geeky stuff is in my day, DNA, designing is in their DNA. So you can um, uh, uh, commission look somebody's design work say will you make a design for me it's it can be very cheap um and one of those designs i will show you was made by a woman in indonesia 475 euros which is in indonesia um, well it's the daily wage is three euros a day so it's enough for three thirty hundred for two months Okay, uh, I got, at the end of, of I, um, I, I had two great logos, and I paid both of them, and the result, well, this was a logo that I loved, you know, it's the jump that, that I found nice, and then this is the other one, 
There's also a jump, but more funny. And um, it took me a long while to make a decision which one I chose for the book. Which one would you, who would choose this one? Okay, who would choose this one? That's a minority. Let's go back to the fact that I said I can't design because I chose this one. <laughs> okay, clearly I should have chosen this one, right? That's a clear majority. That's good for me to know. Thanks. Okay, then there is designing the cover. I have my content, it's content, it's in a PDF, I upload it, and I have Inkscape. I'm assuming people know what Inkscape is. Who doesn't know what Inkscape is? Okay, Inkscape is a, do you know what GIMP is? Yes. Okay, so that's pixel-oriented graphics. The other type of graphics is vector-oriented graphics. Like Illustrator. Like Illustrator, exactly. So that's Inkscape. Um, and then when you upload the PDF, you get a cover, and the cover has a, a backside, then the, the spine, it's called in English, I learned, and then there's the front cover. But together, that's spread. If you, if you remove the, the, the content and you make it flat, you get a spread. But the spread width depends on the thickness of your content. Yeah, you got you with me so far? So after uploading to Lulu, Lulu tells me the spread width should be X. Now, um, and then uh, you go to Inkscape and you design. Uh, well, this is my design effort. Sorry, I know I shouldn't. Um, uh, and clearly I have to replace this logo. Um, but this is what I came up with. And this word cloud I made with a very easy Python script, script that I found online because I wanted a word cloud. I thought it was fun. Um, oh, by the way, if you ever read a book again, this page on the back that always says, oh, this author is brilliant and this is his masterpiece. And every author is asked by the publisher to write that text. <laughs> right? So there's nothing, not somebody else, the author himself has to write uh, the, all this bullshit on the back. <laughs> um, okay, current status. I've got 165 pages. Test print 2 is out. Version for computers, 0.2 alpha, right? Um, current estimated release date, somewhere Q2 this year. And, oh, that's something else. The book looks like, looks like this. So it's got pages and pictures. You know, if you make graphs in books, you know what the term is for the, for the non-tech people? It's management porn. <laughs> if they're, they're, management love graphs. So management porn. Uh, anyway, uh, so, and you just order a copy and Lulu, for the author, it, Lulu tells you um, it's so many euro to print uh, one copy so you know what their cost is. And then you can also say what would you think would be a fair sales price. And the difference is yours. Um, so you make a lot more money selling these than selling a book via a normal publisher. Maybe you sell less because now you are in charge of the marketing. That's the downside, but you make more money. So uh, maybe it evens out, but it feels better. You know what I mean? It feels better. Um, okay. Um, and then there is the scoop. I started a hobby project. So this slide I just put in this morning. Um, and uh, other people who know what this is? Wow, one. Okay, this is the DSKY, Disky, the display and the keyboard. And this used to be in an Apollo uh, space shuttle to the moon back in 69. And... Um, there are several projects online. Currently, my 3D printer has been working for a week to make all the uh, parts for the, uh, the outside. There is already a project for uh, the PCB, but um, I want something different. So um, I, I did do some electronics in, 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 in uh, a bachelor level someday um, in the past, way back in the past. So now I'm doing a KiCad uh, online training course to uh, 
so I can learn to, uh, to design uh, another PCB. So that's my hobby project. Uh, I've just registered the domain. There's no website. There's no email yet working. We'll all, all be done tomorrow, I guess. Okay, thanks for your attention. Any questions? Say what? Can you tell more about the guy who approached you in Spain? Yeah, I can. Is the video off? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, I, I think he doesn't like the spotlight. Once he started a business and in selling a specific kind of fertilizer, and that grew into a company in 30 countries, and then he sold it making him an instant millionaire, may, maybe build multi, I don't know how much, but he's in there, you know. And, um, and he knows about open source. I don't think he programs, but that's, that, but he's, he could be in, he isn't, he's not here, but he could be in the audience, you know. You wouldn't see the difference. He's half nerd, half human. <laughs> um, and for and he wanted uh, this book to, oh yeah, and he also, uh, 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 automated his whole business with Odoo Community Edition. And that's why he uh, now feels like, okay, I want to, he wants to encourage new entrepreneurs to do what he, b basically what he learned, start early using Odoo. Don't start with WordPress for your website first, because you can also do that in Odoo. Start with your website, e even your website in Odoo, and grow from there. Yes. Okay, so for one, it's free, which is nice for a startup. It has huge functionality uh, that's really at a professional level. So your income taxes, uh, your, your invoicing, it's all in there. Um, uh, you can expand on it. And if your business grows at some point, may, probably you will shift to the enterprise edition when you have 100 or 200 people working for you. But it's with innovation and startups, not everybody will grow to that level. So you need to encourage as many people as possible to start a business with a good idea and, and a, a cheap piece of good software and, and see if that can grow into a big business. You have to set up for the next exit. Can I do one? Okay. Uh, the book content is not open source. Okay. Uh, then, uh, back to the topic, can I ask other related questions? Uh, for example, I know I'm aware of the community and the enterprise version. And for example, I start with the community version, and let's say I need one application like the barcode scanner, which is uh, the enterprise version. The enterprise versions offer self-hosted support, but they charge for all the apps per user which you're using. Is there a possibility to use a combination of uh, community based for most of the application and just use the barcode scanner from the enterprise version? No, it works differently. So the OCA, the Odoo Community Association, has a GitHub repository with a huge amount of open source add-ons. So you just have to find the correct add-on in GitHub, incorporate that into the community edition, and then it's, it's, it's completely integrated and because it's a large community. Do you have any comparison with other open source free uh, ERP software like Dolly Bar, Next ERP, or Adempierre? Uh, well, Adempierre being uh, Java based, of course. This is Python. Um, so but I mean, no, I'm not a business specialist. I'm not a specialist that way. Okay, thank you. Can we take further questions offline? Okay. Thank you so much.